Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you today, good sir? Doing all right. Um, you know, I geared my entire day around this giant storm that was supposed to hit Columbus today. And um still dry as hell outside. So <laughs> um yay. <laughs> Uh, weather talk for sun card where's sun card sun card where's sun card We're doing weather talk and he's not even in the live chat man what are you gonna do kyle well speak, speaking of weather jared speaking of weather there there's been some big booms recently there you go there you go kyle that, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> there you uh, go. We just did our mock class for the month of June last week. And Kyle, I feel like this happened to us when we did the, the May mock as well. Like we did a May mock and then there was several booms that came right after. Or maybe so, that was in April. I forget. So what I'm saying is, is that we need to do m more mock classes. <laughs> but we're not going to today. We're We're very lucky. <laughs> Um, and I just want to say we are recording this at approximately 830 on Sunday night. I, there, there's been a lot of like Twitter rumblings that there's more coming. So in case something hits like really late tonight for some reason, although I feel like 830 PM, just, just so we're clear, it's PM, it's 2030. Um, just so we're clear, don't typically hit this late. I think we're safe, but. Uh, since we last talked, Ohio State has added three commitments, all in state. Two from the class of 2024, two from Cleveland Glenville. They're they're the same two from the 2024. And uh, they get their second player for the 2025 class, quarterback, quarterback Tavian St. Clair from Bell Fountain, Ohio, or Bell Fountain depending upon if you're a local or not. <laughs> there um, you go. <laughs> it's, a, it's a whole Lima Lima thing. Yep. Just, just depends upon if you're a local or not. Teddy Gid senior in indeed. Teddy Gid senior indeed. Uh, yeah, he's got, he's got Glenville pumping again and add two more, add two more. Um, Bryce West and Demarion Witten. Um, who we both had, Kyle and I both had in our mock classes last week, or rather we had both of them in our mock class last week. That would be the correct way of saying that. Um, so no huge surprises. Um, there had certainly been some Michigan rumblings that Bryce West was seriously considering Michigan. And I, I never, never bought in on that with Bryce West at all. The Aaron Scott to Michigan rumors have uh, a lot more substance to them, although I'm still mm -hmm. pretty firmly in. But we'll, we'll talk about Aaron Scott later. We're talking about Bryce West right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's but no, I, I agree that. I mean, there was a lot of talk. West was about like tired of people just penciling him in, which mm -hmm. they had definitely had a little worry. But yeah, I, I agree with Jared. I wasn't too concerned that he was going to take his talents up north. Right. And, and, and Aaron Scott, I know was, is we'll talk about Aaron Scott later. Um, uh, Tavian St. Clair, um, <coughs> excuse me. I swallowed wrong. Uh, not currently huge quarterback, uh, excuse me, huge, like ranking numbers. Um, which I'm not concerned about at this time. I, I, I think that a lot of people might say like, Oh, they, they took the Ohio kid and they might, no, nah, Ohio. If Ohio State took a quarterback, it's because they wanted him. Make no mistake, Ohio State can go get whatever quarterbacks they want. Make no mistake, they can go get whatever quarterbacks they want. Um, yep. They they don't sign, they don't take Sinclair into the twenty twenty five class until or unless they're absolutely sure that he can do the job. Completely you know? agree. Yeah. And and by the way, it might not be the only quarterback in this class. Um, might not be the only Ohio quarterback in this class. I think Montgomery still has a legitimate shot of being a part of the Ohio State 2025 class. 
Uh, he is the younger brother of last year's uh, class of the 2023 class. Um, he is uh, or the offensive tackle, Ryan Montgomery. Um, but the signing kid from Ohio uh, takes the icing, uh, the icing on the cake, I assume you mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's great. You you get, and again, like maybe you get two kids from Ohio. Yeah. Um, kids want to make their own decisions at the end of the day. Yeah. But yeah. Back to the cornerback thing. Um, Bryce West. I, I, I feel like, again, there was a little bit of Michigan smoke there. I'm not worried. I was never worried, never ever worried about Bryce West in Michigan. You got to take your visits. You got to do your thing. Never. And by the way, he can, as far as I'm concerned, he can still take a, there were, there were rumors and I don't necessarily know that this has been like called off yet that he was going to take a second visit to Michigan in like two weeks and unofficial this time. Mm -hmm. What does that actually mean? I don't know. Maybe he still takes it. And if he does good for him and if he doesn't uh, better for Ohio state, quite frankly, but whatever, like maybe it's an NIL play to get, to make Ohio state nervous to maybe get a little bit more money in his pocket, which we're not supposed to be talking about before kids sign. Right. Kyle wink, wink, nod, nod, um, <laughs> wink, say no more. Um, and then Demarion Witten, um, another Glenville kid, Big Glenville kid, 6'4", 215, uh, as someone who's not in his senior year of high school yet. Um, again, numbers on none of these kids are impressive. Uh, but as far if you just look at the rankings, but they're all four stars. Um, St. Clair, I believe, is a uh, four star per 24-7 and literally like a tenth of a point or not even a, yeah, like a tenth of a point off of a uh, four star from the composite ranking. But I'm not, again, not worried about any of that. Not worried about any of that. Um, Ohio kids are always slow to get their stars, always slow to get their rankings because they can't camp like they want. And we've talked, we've talked about that a thousand times before. I'm not worried yeah, yeah. about it. Yep. I'm not worried. Uh, these are three excellent ads for Ohio State. That's I mean, I, I wish I maybe I had deep. Maybe I should have deeper analysis, maybe, but I, I don't know what we can say about them that we didn't just say about them last week or we haven't been saying about them during the entire offseason. Um, these were three guys. Uh, we, not that we talked about Tavian and St. Clair a lot, but we did talk about Bryce West and Demarion Witten a lot as as two guys who you absolutely had to go get. And Bryce West, I think, especially was a guy you absolutely had to go get. Yeah, you could, arguably you couldn't the, miss on Bryce West. Um, yeah, arguably the, the best uh, recruit out of the state of Ha. So, yeah, you got you got to get him here. Yeah, especially if you're looking early too early here. Um, Notre Dame's making a big push on Ohio's, on Ohio's number one recruit for the 2025 class here. Also a, uh, a cornerback. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like they Notre Dame got did Notre Dame get the number one kid from the 2023 class or was that Michigan? It doesn't matter. Um, I don't remember, but yeah, like this, this is uh, Michigan's going to recruit Ohio again. They, they didn't try for a long time and now they're trying again. And with the Ohio centric, coaching staff currently in no you know over, over in Notre Dame land right now they're going to be recruiting Ohio much harder than they did in recent years you're going to have to fight for these in-state kids a lot more than you had to and Ohio State's adjusted Ohio State has adjusted knowing that to be the case they are pursuing those in-state kids much harder than they ever did under urban Meyer. And again, some of that is because of new pressures from Michigan and Notre Dame. And some of that has to do with NIL and getting kids to stay in state who want to play for Ohio state. Yeah. Zach just barely beats me to that. NIL money helps. Yeah. Um, absolutely. And, you know, getting 
Ohio kids to play at Ohio State reduces the risk of like a last second NIL flip. Last kid to the number one in the uh, composite 24 seven sports to not go to Ohio State was back in 2018. Hmm. Me, well, yes, maybe the rankings shifted. I'll say that. Maybe the rankings shifted at, to yeah, th- there was a been, point in that time. Been, that would have been Jackson. Yeah, no, Jackson yeah, yeah. Carmen. But then back in 2016 was uh, Tommy uh, Kramer, uh, the uh, hackle out of um, Cincinnati, went to Notre Dame. Right. Um, I, I guess whoever I'm thinking of, the the uh, rankings changed because I know that was uh, the case for a while, but regardless, we move forward. Did he go to a Cincy Catholic school? Uh, Our resident Cincinnati expert gangland asks. He went to elder. Hmm. There's your answer. Adds up. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what that means, but all right. So Kyle, those, those are, the three big ads elder is weird. I know you have uh, shared some elder slander in the past gangland. And I don't know if I don't know enough about Cincinnati high school uh, culture to know if you're just like shitting on them because they're like a rival or something. So I don't know how serious to take you. (laughs) It's a men's volleyball school. And Ohio State is a synchronized swimming school. What's your point? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Zeke Corral. Does that name ring a bell, Jared? Zeke Corral in 2019. No, it was it was either last year or the year before that. But we move forward. It's fine. Okay, so with those three guys in their respective classes, I think it's time to take a look at some other players um, who either visited last week and, um, you know, we have some more news on or some more thoughts to share or have just completed visiting this past weekend. And we have, you know, some thoughts to share. So. Yeah, it was another big weekend too. Two weekends oh, in a yeah. row for for Ohio State. Well, the whole month of June on it. And yeah, so I'm telling you right now, I've already and I'm not gonna. We're gonna wait a month or so before releasing a new mock class, but I've already made changes to it since since uh seven days ago. I'm not revealing those changes because I'm not gonna do a mock every week, but I've already made changes to the mock. So, I mean, that's that's how fast these things change. Yeah, yeah. So, Kyle, we're kind of bouncing around talking about Aaron Scott for a moment. Again, I never believed that Bryce West was was really ever going to go to Michigan. Aaron Scott, I think that there is a lot more to be nervous about as far as him potentially ending up at Michigan. Um, I know that. Aaron Scott had issues with the way his recruitment was being portrayed, uh, Mm -hmm. the way his recruitment was being reported on, that he was just like an Ohio State guy and he was definitely going to go to Ohio State. And like, if you are, I'm assuming he's 17. I don't actually know. If you're a 17 year old and you're making the first and biggest decision of your entire life, you you know, you're getting a little bit of autonomy for the first time. You're getting to really take control of your life for the first time. I think the last thing you want is a bunch of people telling you what you're going to do before you've even decided to do it. I think he made a tweet at some point saying something along those lines. You know, he was tired of people just placing mid Ohio state. Yep. I mean, we, we've heard, we've heard that number of times in recent I, years too. It's I, that it's a I, recurring thing. It is my opinion. And this is just an opinion that that's why Jackson Carmen didn't go to Ohio state, but that's just my, but that is just my opinion. Anyway, 
if you are Aaron Scott, you want to make sure everyone knows you're making a decision and that it's your decision and that you've thought it out and that you've made it. And to be clear, I'm not saying that all of the Michigan talk is a smokescreen. I am not saying that. I am saying that Aaron Scott is taking his recruitment very seriously and he is exploring options and he is taking those options very seriously. And I think right now it's 55, 45, Ohio state, 60, 40, Ohio state. I still give Ohio state a lean here, but I'm not going to be absolutely floored if he goes to Michigan. Getting beat by them for the number one player in Ohio would be unbearable. Um, he is not. Well, per 24 seven sports, he has been at the composite. Right. It just sort of depends upon who, yeah. but yeah, who you ask. Yeah. I, I really, really want Aaron Scott. I, I think he's a tremendous player. Um, don't panic until you see CBs to teach. Yeah, there, I believe there's currently like two or three crystal balls in on Aaron Scott. Um, and all yep. of them are pointing towards Ohio State. I will say that both of those um, crystal balls, I believe, have been sitting there a very long time. Oh, Kyle, with the screenshots, 2022 and 2022. Yeah, I mean, and there's a third one. Um also, uh, that one's more recent. That's April 2023. Um, like you could look at those crystal balls from Will Fong and from Kirk and, and, and you could just be like. Maybe that's why he's mad. Pe pe when you get that Will Fong crystal ball, people are just like, oh, well, he's definitely going there. Um, I again. He wants the decision to be his and he wants everyone to know that the decision is his. Mm -hmm. And I respect him for that. Don't take the kid's autonomy away. I still think he ends up at Ohio State. But I'm not sure. And I don't think I've not heard anything. I don't know if I've said this yet. He just visited Ohio State. Uh, this past weekend, he just visited Ohio State. Um I have not heard, seen, read. I have no information that makes me feel any different. And I was, I, I, I was, I said that like I was going to say more words. I wasn't. I just, I don't feel any different. Um, had a sick visit photo in a starter jacket. Yeah, yeah, he did. Um, I'm just saying, like. I had Ohio State with a slight lead going into the weekend. I have Ohio State with a slight lead coming out of the weekend, and I've just not seen or heard or read anything to change my mind on that. I think Berm said all the visits went great again. I, yeah, you, the visits always go great. Everyone always has a great time. They they heard all the things they needed to hear. I would expect Berm to say nothing less, but but that's because that's Berm is like any of the other like major recruiting guys. He is repeating things that the players say to him and that the coaches say to him. The players are eager to please. They just got an Ohio State. They just did an Ohio State visit. They're talking to an Ohio State beat writer. They want they're going to say what they think that the reporter wants to hear, which is that everything's great. Yep. And then, of course, the coaching staff at Ohio State is going to go to Berm and say everything went great. Now, you know, Berm's been doing this a long time. He knows how to read between the lines and he knows how to read the tea leaves of, you know, was it was it great because they said it was great or, you know, were they actually excited? You know, he's a professional. He knows what he's doing. But I'm just saying that, like, sometimes a visit goes absolutely great and then they go somewhere else. And that's OK, because, you know, they can go on five great visits, but they still just have to pick one place to to go. Mm -hmm. Except Speaking that one of... time <laughs> we put a recruit on college game day. 
Uh, I, I, I don't know who the we is in that sentence, but I don't think the coaching staff was happy about that or involved in that. Yeah. <laughs> Like the, the coaching, um, the coaching staff knew they had to walk away from the recruitment after that. Like they weren't told that they knew that someone else effed that up. So, so speaking of with the, uh, um, a sick, uh, photo and had a great time, Jared, this guy, uh, as soon as it wants to load, there he goes, uh, on our next topic here, uh, Justin Scott. Yeah. Justin Scott is a big man. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> um, yes, he this, is. This feels like a real outside opportunity for Ohio State. Uh, Kyle just puts his info down in the chat. Uh, 21st nationally. Um, number one from Illinois. Um, one of the best defensive tackles in this entire class. Um, Six four three ten. Yeah. That's a big boy coming at you. Yeah. Um, and of course, as things go, they went great. <laughs> it was a great <laughs> visit. Yada, yada, yada. And and I think Ohio State went from having little to no chance to having little chance. Or like outside chance, like a slightly more than little chance. And I'm not, you know, and maybe that's progress. But like you go from basically no chance to actually getting him to show up on campus, which is always the biggest thing you can do. To OK. Can you now start to. You know, get him to start thinking about Ohio State instead of Georgia, instead of Miami, instead of Notre Dame. Because those appear to be the contenders. Michigan as well, I think, in the conversation. Yep. Um, getting him to not go to Notre Dame or to not go to Georgia or the other schools I mentioned will be challenging. You can, like I said, you can get him to show up and you can get him to really, really like Ohio State and really, really think about Ohio State. But how do you get him to choose Ohio State over those other schools that he's been considering more heavily for a longer time? So it's an uphill battle. Ohio State has placed themselves in the battle, which I think is as good as you can get right now. And I think what you hope for at this point is that he waits a really long time to commit. That he waits all the way till December or maybe even into the spring because he's a five star kid and he can afford to wait into the spring if he so chooses. And you just sort of hope that he gives you as much of an opportunity as 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 you can and you hope that he waits as long as he can to give you as much opportunity as, as possible um we need to get lj to this man's basketball game or family barbecue or whatever uh lj grandpa magic he still has in the tank oh, for sure for sure and like if anyone can do it larry johnson can do it absolutely All right. Uh, next up here, Jared. Kingston Villamu Asa out of California, one of the um, top linebackers in the country here. Uh, Bellflower, California, to be precise here. Um, one of the uh, was one of the part of the recruits for this last weekend that visited Ohio State here. What, what have you heard from him? I've had him in the in our mock class for two, maybe three. They're they're giving you props for proper pronunciation, Kyle, which is funny because I don't know if any of them know how to say it either. I think. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I do not. Yeah, at least they're at <laughs> we're, least they're we're, being we're, honest. We're, sti we're sticking with it. We're going to stick with it. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> All right, continue, Jared. <laughs> Um, St. John Bosco, Bellflower, California, a, uh, a school that Ohio State has had, uh, some success with in the past, uh, six, three, two thirty feels like a traditional old school power linebacker. Um, I, like I said, I've had him, I've, I've had him in the 
mock class in our mock class for several mock classes running. Got to get them on campus. Got to get, you know, you got to do all those things. And I, I think Kyle, and maybe I won't give this away yet, but, you know, with all of the Twitter buzz and everything that maybe a guy could be committing. I got him on the short list. I'm not saying he's like the one I'd choose. In fact, we'll ask that question at the end of the show. But I think he's on the short list. I, I think I think uh, Asa, I think, is a. When, not if at this point, like I, I feel like if if I'm putting like a zero out of 10 confidence score here, I'm at like nine point seven three five. Not nine point seven three six. Nine point seven three five, but also not nine point seven three four. Nine point seven three five. All right. Uh, who would you like to start with next here? Uh, that's totally up to you, Kyle. Where you want to go? Well, let's stick with the defensive line. Let's talk about, I mentioned him last week here. Um, Edric Houston. Uh, another, another kid here, the Ohio State's trying to steal out of the state of Georgia here. Yeah. Um, we mentioned last week he play, he does have a commitment uh, date in in the middle end of August here. And yeah, Ohio State is in the the running to potentially get him um and bring him up to Ohio. He still has a visit, I believe, upcoming for Alabama. Um he does. Um no that that was this weekend. Oh okay. Okay. Um, he visited, so he, he, just... he went to he went to Clemson, then Georgia previous weekend was Ohio State and then just this last weekend here was Alabama. OK, um, unless Alabama pulls some sort of Alabama magic, I believe he's a Buckeye. That's that's it. I think he's a good schematic fit for Ohio State. And I think that's one of the things that is um, a big. How do I say a big advantage for Ohio State is that I, I just think he fits in the Ohio State scheme better than he fits in either the Bama or Georgia scheme at this time. Um, you know, if we got a, if we get a chain of high profile defensive commits, there will be an armed citizens militia honor guard flanking I 71 for the start of camp. I mean, you, you overestimate the amount of recruiting that the average fan pays attention to. <laughs> I'll just say that. Um, I'll just say that. Um, I'm a football DJ. Yeah, exactly. You're you're watching this live. <laughs> you're you're a DJ. It's just no, no, no. Uh, it would break through to the casuals. It 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 really wouldn't. I I hate to break this to you. No, it wouldn't. How many cat? How many people in Columbus right now could, if pressed immediately, could could actually say, actually answer the question, who do you think Ohio State's quarterback's going to be, and be able to name both of the guys in the running? Because it's not as many as you think. You think that's ridiculous because you're such a super fan that you pay money. To to a podcast and listen to a podcast recording live and listen to 50 other Ohio state pod. If you're, if you're watching or listening to this, you think that's ridiculous in the city, 15% gangland, not just in the city, in the city among self-proclaimed Buckeye fans. And it's probably about 15%. I think that's a decent number. It's living in Columbus, self-proclaimed Buckeye fans. I'm just saying you'd be shocked at how little recruiting the casual person pays attention to. Yep. Eight is if you ask them about the Browns. We're, we're, we're a Bengals city now. You didn't know. 
Um, all right, Kyle. We're uh, yeah. So yeah, Edric Houston, I, I think uh, great pickup for Ohio State. Should they get uh, Edric Houston, twenty uh, seventh best player nationally, five star player, um, number five in the DL um, category in twenty four seven. What does that mean exactly? It doesn't mean all defensive linemen because we know it doesn't count edge rushers. I, I, I hate the whole 24 seven thing where they switch to edge and DL. I don't know what the hell that means. I'm just going to say it. I mean, I do, but it's still annoying. Uh, number six player out of state of Georgia. All right. The next. So I get, we'll stick with the defensive side here, Jared. 43% of sc- subscribers will say they're happy no matter who wins the quarterback job. If you know, you know. <laughs> Not touching that one, but did I read it out loud? Yes, I did. Sticking with the uh, state of Georgia here, Jared. Same high school, even. Same high school, even. Yeah, Buford. 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 Actually pronounced both ways. Oh, uh, really? I've only ever uh-huh. heard it pronounced Buford. Uh-huh. There's a, there's a, you know what? I'm I'm going to mess it up here. Whoa, I'm going to mess it up here. I forget which one's in North Carolina, which one's in South Carolina. But one well, this one's in Georgia and they, and they call it Buford. Okay. One's Beaufort and the other is Buford. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've never heard of Buford, Georgia called anything other than Buford. Well, South Carolina is special. I guess so. Uh, (laughs) KJ Bolden. (laughs) We're talking about KJ Bolden here, Jared. Uh, Safety, arguably one of the best players in, in the, uh, in this recruiting class here. Definitely. We talked about, um, you know, with a previous person here, uphill battle for Ohio State, if they're going to get him. another one here, but I think they've already made a sprint up that hill though. I, I yeah. think I think it's between Ohio State and Georgia at this point. I, I think it is, too. But I I think KJ's in, from recent uh, activities here, it seems like he's probably most likely going to go to Georgia, especially with um, three crystal balls, including Steve um, Wilt Fong, putting in their crystal balls to Georgia. Yeah, uh, which is. Which is why um, I hope Rayola is super annoying and drives Buford dudes away. Yeah, he uh, another Buford note. Dylan Rayola is transferring to Buford. Uh, yes, Kirby Smart did see that. Want him not being in the state apparently. Um, I'm. I said it last week that in during the uh, mock class that I think that between KJ Bolden and Peyton Woodyard, that one of them ends up in Georgia and one of them ends up in Columbus. I stick by that. Um, yeah. Gang like that gang lane. That's actually a good point. Um, kind of backtracking to Houston. Uh, Ohio state's defense definitely fits more of what Houston, uh, Edric Houston, that is, uh, the type of defense, Ohio State runs fits what Houston's looking for, a 4-3 defense rather than the 3-4 that Georgia typically runs. So uh, that, that advantage Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, I I said the same thing. So, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, yeah, it, to me, for KJ Bolden here, I, I think it, I think it'd be a miracle if Ohio State gets them now. Yeah, they, they, they made their push here. Uh, but yeah, it's, yeah, that's, that's going to be, that's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. And that's what, that's what he was saying, wasn't it? That Beaufort in North Carolina and there's a Beaufort in South Carolina. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. We move forward. Um, just clarifying. That's fine. That's fine. I just, I almost went down into those weeds and then I decided not to. That's, that's only, the only thing that happened there, Spikes. Um, I said it last week um, that 
Bolden ends up, you know, at Ohio State or Georgia, and that Peyton Woodyard ends up at Ohio State or Georgia, and that they won't both be going to the same school. Um, the one thing I would say that I've changed about that, despite the fact that Peyton Woodyard is currently committed to Georgia, that's a thing. But at this point, I think it's either Ohio State or it's USC. Um, Peyton Woodyard is in California. That should be pointed out. That should be noted. Uh, another St. John Bosco kid. Um, again, committed to Georgia not long after or maybe right before the national title game. Um, but I, I just I, he's not going to Georgia at this point. Like, I'm just going to just throwing that out there. I don't think he's going to Georgia at this point. So mm -hmm. the, the the disaster scenario here is that Bolden goes to Georgia and Woodyard goes to USC. I think is the, the disaster scenario here. Um, I still believe that Ohio State gets one of them. Ohio State will not get both of them, but neither will Georgia and neither will USC. But there's two kids in three schools. Um, the good news, if you're Ohio State, is that you're in the running for both of them. Um, which I, at this point, I don't think you could say the same thing about Georgia, because I think Georgia, I think Woodyard is out on Georgia, again, despite the fact he's currently committed there. And I don't think USC was ever in on KJ Bolden, not seriously. Um, so yeah, disaster scenario is Bolden to Georgia and Woodyard to USC, which is possible. Um, Ohio State already has a really good safety in this class, so it wouldn't be the worst thing that ever happened. And there's a couple other safeties out there that I think Ohio State um, could get in on. Um, Jacob Jude, uh, Jordan Johnson, Rebel. Um, Reg, uh, Gangland says Reggie Powers would commit in an instant. Probably Reggie Powers. Uh, Ohio State was has a great had or has a great relationship with Reggie Powers. He ends up committing to Michigan State. Um, would he sort of drop everything and commit to Ohio State if Ohio State came calling, or would he be like, "No, you guys had your chance and you wanted someone better, and I've made my choice." I've seen kids act react both ways in the in that scenario. I, how would Reggie Powers react? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but there are, there are backup plans and they're, like I said, they already have Jalen uh, McLean, who's an excellent safety in the class. So again, if they miss out on Woodyard and Bolden, it's not, it's not going to be the worst thing that ever happened. They'll be fine. But of course you, I mean, hell you want both of them. You can get both of them. You get both of them, but I, I don't think that's even semi-realistic. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, anybody else, Jared? Anybody else you want to talk about? Gerby Lambert. I want to talk about Gerby Lambert. Um, I think Ohio State is in on two kids, um, two high profile offensive tackles to finish out the Ohio State offensive line class. Um, we talked about this in detail last week. So I'm not going to harp on it again too much, but, you know, they, they have four excellent offensive linemen currently in the class. Uh, I think what they currently lack in this class is a second true offensive tackle. One of the Armstrong twins is absolutely an offensive tackle. The other one's like tackle guard, guard tackle. Um, they need to add a true left side offensive elite offensive tackle into this class in order for this offensive line class to be a true success. Uh, yeah, Gerby, Lambert, Lambert, Lambert fits that role, right? There. 100%. 6'6", 280. You put on, you put on an extra 15 pounds there. You're, yeah, you're good. You're, you're, you're a good tackle there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, composite has them at number 50 overall in the entire country. The second best offensive tackle. Um, Three schools involved here. I think 300 is a good weight for a tackle. Um, I'll say this based off of just pictures and video I've seen. The 280 he has is a good 280. Um, that this is not a, a sloppy 
280 by any means. Like he doesn't he doesn't look like an overly rot- rotund uh, 280. I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> 15 tips to ne- negotiate a great salary. Threaten a coup. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're moving on, Jared. <laughs> one of the weird things about Gerby Lambert. You know, yeah, okay, so one, he's from Massachusetts. That's not necessarily weird, but you don't you don't see a ton of football talent come out of Massachusetts. Um, but what's weird here is that a lot of the times, outside of being named Gerby, hey, we want him to come to Ohio State. Let's be let's be nice. Um, a lot of, you know, we always like to joke about like the one, you know, he learned to fight. That's a valid point. I wonder if he actually goes by Gerby or if there's like a nickname we're not aware of yet. Um, a lot of times when you see, like, we, we joke about this all of the time where you'll see a kid who's like from South Carolina, who's like final five will be like Georgia, Alabama, and South Carolina. Or, you know, and then Ohio State and Clemson, right? You'll see a kid from Indiana whose final five is Ohio State and Michigan and Notre Dame and Indiana and LSU. It's like there's always just like that. They're they're keeping the local, they're keeping the local school in on it just like for niceties. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Final three. I don't know. If this is official, but just like per everything I've read, we're we're really down to three schools on Gerby Lambert. It's Ohio State, it's Notre Dame, and it's Boston College. Here's the weird part, though, is that apparently Boston College is a very legit contender here. Like this is not. This is apparently not just like throwing a bone to the local school. Um, Gerby Lambert is apparently very big on like life after football. Kids a brainiac, huh? Yeah, that, that's essentially what I was saying when I say he's very interested in life after football. You random know, thing, you, random yeah. thing, Jared. Yeah. Last, last com- Ohio State commit com- coming from the state of Massachusetts. Is that was was NPF Massachusetts? Nope. No. I thought uh he was New Jersey. Uh, yeah. Or I, New I think York. New Jersey, New York. Um it was a long time ago. Long time ago. Okay. Stop teasing. 2012 was the last time it's not Ohio that long State- ago. Well, that was 11 years ago. That's, that, that's a long time that, ago. It's not that long ago, Kyle. For God's sake, stop making me feel old. It's not that long ago. I actually got two um, two players from the state of Massachusetts. Uh, um, Armani Reeves. Okay. And Cameron Williams. Okay. There you go. Um, yeah, the weird thing here is that don't take Boston College lightly. And that that's really like... That's really it. Um, And again, they're sort of down to Gerby Lambert. And again, um, don't don't rule out the possibility that it's Brandon Baker instead of Gerby Lambert. But Kyle, I talked last week how I I just I don't trust those monarchs from California. They they, they never end up coming here. That's all I'm that's all I'm going to say about Brandon Baker right now. no, no, never, never, never trust, never trust them. They don't, they never come here. They always say they're going to come here. They never come here. Um, and that's, that's all I have to say about that. I think, um, I mean, it really, even to the point where I, I don't even have, um, Eh, it doesn't matter. We move forward. Um, yeah, I, so I think 
Kyle, I think that's everyone we wanted to talk about in, in great detail. So the question next, and I'm throwing this open to both our live Discord chat and also anyone uh, watching this on YouTube, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Who's next? Again, now it's, it's, it's almost 9.30. Uh, as, as, as far as I know, no one's committed in the hour since we've been talking. I really don't expect a commitment to come in at this hour. So Kyle, we might actually get away with this. Who's next question being totally legitimate. Um, who's next? You got to pick one. Don't, don't give <sighs> me a list. Born. It's got to be one name. And that goes for everyone in the discord and anyone in the YouTube comments. I don't want to list the names. I don't want a tier list. I don't want um, a ranking from one to five. I want a single name. Man, that's <laughs> that, that's tough. Just uh, Ohio State has been on fire this month here. And trying to and trying to think of one more person to kind of finish off a an outstanding June um, yeah. recruiting month here. Yeah. Gangland uh, throws one out there for Asa. I I don't think Aaron's going to commit soon, so I don't I don't think it's going to be Aaron. Uh, not Justin Scott here. No, I I don't. If Justin Scott commits before the end of June, it's bad news for Ohio State. I'll say that much. Um, Aaron Scott, I I I I have no feelers for timing I, on at this I, point. Honestly, my my gut feeling, Jared, if it's going to be anybody, and I don't think it's going to happen. I think it might be. I think it might be Lambert. I'd go with Lambert just because he's been to Ooh. Ohio State a lot recently. He's he's made a lot of visits to Ohio State in um isn't Scott re committing July fourth or sixth? That is currently what he's saying. Yes, I I have a feeling it's we'll see if he can we'll see if he sticks to it. That's all I'm gonna say. I'll, and I and I don't know anything. I'm just I do not know anything. Putting that out there, I'm not trying to act like I know something. I don't know anything. We'll see if he sticks to it. I'll just go with Lambert just because of his recent visits to Ohio State. Okay. L Lambert's a tough read at this point. That's all I'm going to say. Like he's. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I understand. I understand. But I just I just don't have any. I just don't see the others here. Maybe, maybe, maybe you can put in Edric Houston, maybe, but I, I just don't see any of the ones that we've listed to, um, to make their decision soon. Okay. Buckeye Esquire says Miles Lockhart, I think not someone we, we didn't talk, uh, too deeply into the cornerbacks outside of outside of Scott and West in this episode. We did talk about Miles Lockhart a lot last week, and I think Miles Lockhart is an excellent guess. I think Miles Lockhart's an excellent guess. Um, and in fact, I'm I'm stuck between him and Asa. If we're really choosing the next member of this class, I'm, I am going to go with Lockhart. I, I really wanted to go with KVA as well, but Miles Lockhart's my guy. Just going to uh, would Lockhart commitment impact Aaron Scott? No, I. This is going to be a, Ohio State only took two corners in last year's class. They missed late on some guys. They only took two cornerbacks in last year's class. Now they 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 do go to the transfer portal and, and grab a, you know, 
an excellent player from Ole Miss who only has one year of experience. But by the time these guys get on the field who have three years of experience, we technically did grab three. Um. Oh, Styles. Yeah, but Styles is a senior, right? Like, I'm not I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about freshmen. I'm talking about freshmen. Um, because, like, we're talking about the impact on, you know, the 2023 class impacting the 2024 class is specifically what I'm talking about here. Um, cause again, they also got, yeah, Iggy, as you said. Um, but anyway, what I was saying is, is that this is going to be a large cornerback class and I can't imagine, um, that I can't imagine that Ohio state has done anything other than say, we're going to take a bunch of cornerbacks to all of the cornerbacks. We, you know, they only got two freshmen last year. I, I, what have I, what did I write down in my mock? Um, cornerbacks four or five is what I wrote down in my notes for the mock. I think the number's four for the record. Um, but if it was the right player, they'd take five and they'd figure out a way to do it. If they get four guys and then all of a sudden Kobe Black decides, no, I'm not feeling Texas anymore. Y'all got any room up there in Columbus? They'd be like, hell yeah, Kobe, come on. Um, For the right guy, for the right group of guys, they'd take five. Um, So, yeah, it's I, I do not see I do not see that being I don't see Miles Lockhart. um joining as any sort of hindrance to Aaron Scott. Um, the only thing I would see is like a hindrance to Aaron Scott would maybe be like a guy like Kobe black, but one, I think Kobe black's going to going to Austin and, and two, if you were to come to Columbus, it wouldn't be immediately. Anyway, it would be months from now. Um, because, you know, like, like I was saying, um, like I was saying with Justin Scott, if he commits next week, it's not going to be to Ohio State. If you want to get Kobe Black, if you want to get Justin Scott, you have to hope that those recruitments last a really long time so that you have time to catch up. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. It would have to be like an elite level player. And it's not me knocking Miles Scott, who I think has an excellent future um, in college football by any means. But like if you do Bryce, uh, Bryce West plus Kobe Black, then maybe at that point, Aaron Scott gets nervous about playing time or whatnot. Miles Lockhart, again, I think will be an excellent player, but like. The, the, the recruiting rankings and whatnot aren't going to jump off the page and scare you if, if you're another cornerback. Um, and again, those the, the rankings are what the rankings are. They're not perfect. And again, I think Miles Lockhart has an excellent future at Ohio State, um, should he choose Ohio State, which I think he will. Um, so I'm not, I'm not knocking Miles Lockhart, but I'm talking like how much room is there for like five-star or near five-star cornerbacks in the class. So, no, I just, I don't think, I don't think Lockhart committing affects Aaron Scott um, in any sort of way. Again, this was always going to be a big cornerback class. All right, anything else, Jared, before we wrap things up? Um, no. Um, by the way, I, I, I'm cheating. It's my show. I can do it. Um, I'm, I'm going to throw a bonus name out there for next to commit. And this is a flyer. This is a real flyer. 
You ready for this one? Mm -hmm. Carter Lowe. Jared, who the hell's Carter Lowe? He's an offensive tackle for the 2025 class. God, we got two guys, we got two guys in the 2025 class. Time to get that ball rolling now, too. We might have to. I don't know if it'll be next week. Maybe sometime in July, Kyle. I think we need to do like a class of 2025 primer. We need to do like a 20. We I don't think we've talked about the class of 2025 at all. I think we need a 2025 primer episode and soon. All right. We won't be doing a mock. We're not that crazy. We don't go that far out in advance. But a primer. Sure. We can do a primer. Yep, Kyle throwing that info down there. Yeah, I don't know what there is to know about 2025 yet. That's totally fair. Again, Ohio State only has two commitments there so far. Carter Lowe, um, big in-state prospect. Um but he's, they say he's in state, but it's Toledo. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like saying he's in state, but it's Cincinnati and he goes to a Catholic school. Like it's just not a slam dunk. <laughs> Wait, Kyle, the Catholic school kids in Cincinnati I, go to Notre Dame. That's I know, not, I know, that's, I know. What, what, what's I know. that face? What's that face? <laughs> I'm just you, Jared. You being you. It's just you being you. You acted like I said something out of pocket. I felt like that was totally in pocket. It's that's uh, okay. Just don't stop being you. Okay. <laughs> that's all I needed to hear. Uh, Kyle, what do you have in Kyle's corner? Um, speaking of Cincinnati, let's get through 23 first. We're, we're talking about recruiting classes, Zach. We have to get through 24 first. We're always a yes. year ahead on recruiting. There you go. All right. Sorry, Kyle. Anybody want any, um, some, uh, some good vibe news? Yes. You want some good vibe news or yes. do you want, or do you want something about making fun of a former, former coach? Oh, Kyle's offering you feel good or shot in Freud. Those are your two choices. Everyone. Both. Why not? Why both? not both? <laughs> <laughs> uh, why not both? Because we're, we're, we're brushing up on that hour. That's why God may, maybe yes. do an abbreviated version of both. All right. Um, yeah, I did not know this until I saw, saw this coming up, but, uh, Drew Chrisman is with the Bengals now. I did not realize that. Yes. Sir. But, uh, yes. he's doing great things down in Cincinnati here. Um, uh, don't know if anybody, knew this or saw this um, come up within this last week here, but uh, he's also a, a uh, door dash driver. For, wow. Um, the, I know the Bengals are Cincinnati. cheap, but holy hell. Yeah. Well, 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 well. <laughs> I Any, say all, acting all like money, I don't all, know the story. <laughs> oh yeah. All money, all money that Drew Chrisman is making for door dash is all donated to those in need down in uh, Cincinnati there. Yeah. And he'll, 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 he'll take that money and he buys food, pizzas and just drives down to downtown Cincinnati. And just, he's like, Hey, who's hungry? Gives out pizzas and water bottles and yeah, it helps out as much as he can there. Ronald McDonald house is down there. Is, is that, is that where he's taking it gangland? Is that where he takes like the extra food and stuff? Is that what you're saying? Not sure, but it's an option. Okay. Yeah, here, here you go for those in the chat here. Here's, here's a little video of him recently that he went to a local pizza place, grabbed like 10, 12 boxes of, of pizza and just went downtown and just asked who's hungry. And started giving out pizza and, and water bottles there. So good stuff by Drew Christman. Good stuff there. <laughs> to answer the question, why are you a, a DoorDash driver, Drew? I use the money to I use the money I make to spend at local restaurants and hand food out around town. Hope that clears things up. See, it's not just because the Bengals are cheap. I just, you have to, you have to, you have to make a Bengals or cheap joke. You have to do it. All right, Kyle, what's the schadenfreude news? Um, I'm sure people have seen the 
seen the news coming out of LSU. NCAA vacating 37 wins under Leslie Edwin Miles. Did not know that Les Miles' name was Leslie. Did you know that, Jared? What else would Les stand for? Don't answer I, I that. Don't I don't know. I it's, didn't it's, think it's it was still Leslie. <laughs> it is still Lest, Pride. Ah, Lester. Lester. Oh, okay. I was going to say, it's still Pride <laughs> Month. Please don't answer that. Um, uh, so that, br- that brings his total win, official win record at 108 wins and 73 losses, which is just under the 600 winning percentage, which just makes him uneligible for the Hall of Fame. Uh, as the kids would say, wah, wah. <laughs> so Leslie vac- is vacating a prominent the wins from Southern 2012 th- through 2015 there. Isn't he from Michigan, wins. though, Zach? Yeah, he, is. he was. I feel like Leslie used to be a masculine name, or at least a... How, a genderless name, I guess. Um, Cause wasn't um, crap. What was his name? I can't think of his name. Uh, did they void anything from the 2007 season? They did not. Nope. No, no, they did not. Yeah. But just cause they vacated, it doesn't mean we, it's, it's a, va- it's a vacation vacation. Uh, it's 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 vacated. It's not um, over under nine point five years until LSU has to forfeit their 2019 title. I mean, they were literally they were literally handing out cash, although I guess at the I guess if the cash is being handed out at the end of the national championship game, they they're 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 no longer they didn't play any games ineligible. Right, because the game was over. Leslie, Stacy, Lindsay are all intersex names. Nothing wrong with that besides the laughs. No, no, by any means. Um, and also there was once a boy named Sue. So that's a thing. Kyle, do you have anything else in Kyle's corner? Do you want, is there a trifecta no, coming? I've, I've spent too much time in Kyle's corner here. So, <laughs> you know, so according, I, I, according to the chat and, and at least a um, vocal portion of the fan base, that's not true. All right. <laughs> well, that's it. That's it. That's it. We'll, we'll, we'll end it right there. Okay. Um, tonight's ending music, Kyle. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by... Uh, let's go with Up the Vine by the Floorwalkers. Up the Vine by the Floorwalkers. Um, they're a jazzy sort of pop band. So uh, everyone stay tuned. If you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, um, you just you just keep listening and that music's coming. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, it's down in the show notes. You can click on the link and, and listen as well if you would like to. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen local music and of course sports local podcasters once again these are the floor walkers 